फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर अटेंशन बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर रहीम दिस इज अजर इकबाल स्पीकिंग बिफोर यू फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ एन ऑनलाइन सेशन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू कंडक्ट एन ऑनलाइन सेशन ऑन मीडिया राइटिंग स्किल्स स्पेशली द राइटिंग स्किल्स फॉर ब्रॉडकास्ट मीडिया सो दिस ब्यूटीफुल एंड दिस अमेजिंग सेशन इज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ मीडिया एंड कम्युनिकेशन स्टडीज एज वेल एज फॉर द practitioners and the professionals of media industry so our honorable guest has joined us so let me introduce him first of all with you uh, he has a very long introduction but i would not waste your moments the precious time which you spared for our session i would like to uh, tell you about him that mr jackie pal liu is uh, a media academician he is a professional broadcaster he is from china and currently he is serving in united states of america so mr lee is currently teaching media writing skills and other subjects of mass communication in william allen white school of journalism and mass communication in united states of america he secured his bachelor's degree in media production from china and he got his master's degree from Pittsburgh University United States of America so currently he's also teaching and getting his phd degree from united states of america before uh, coming to usa he has been working in different organizations in television or radio organizations in china and he has always been uh, he has been associated with many broadcasting associations in united states recently has been awarded with an appreciation from the association the broadcasting association of kansas and he always uh, he also has been awarded the appreciation from the south central broadcasting society so without wasting any moments let's welcome our honorable guest mr pam liu from united states Mr. Jackie, please over to you. Thank you so much, Professor Iqbal. It's really my great pleasure to be here.、Um, now, I just want to clarify、uh, something real quick.、Uh, I know there are、um, still five and a half hours until you can eat and drink something. You're in the middle of Ramadan. I am aware of that, so I'm really trying to、um, trying to make my session engaging and interesting. So you are not thinking about what to eat while I'm talking, <laughs> what to eat tonight while I'm talking.、Uh, anyways, uh, let me go ahead and get started. Without further ado, today I'm going to talk about、um, broadcast writing. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box.、Um, at the end of the session, I will reserve some time. For you to ask the questions and then I'll address them、uh, accordingly. Thank you very much. If I'm allowed,、um, I will go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, screen sharing option is allowed. Yep. Can you see the?、Uh, can you see my PowerPoint, please? Yes, yes, yes. It is. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So writing for broadcasting. I'm going to talk about this topic from a、um, uh, from mainly、uh, three points, right? Three aspects. I'm first going to talk about what it is, okay? Why is important、um, for us to write in a different style, and how is it different from writing for newspapers? And then I'm going to talk about a few nuts and bolts, meaning a few specific points, mechanisms in terms of how to write differently. And then I'm going to talk about different genres. Right, there are different types in terms of broadcast writing. You're writing for different things. Again, very technical terms. If we don't get to get to it, it's definitely fine. I'll send the material to Professor Ikbo. Um, and then we can.、Um, he, he, I bet he'll talk just better, or as good as, or better than me. And then we're going to draw into a conclusion. Pretty clear, huh? Okay, let's go ahead and get us started. First of all, what is broadcast writing? Um, 
first, let me introduce this concept, right? These two concepts. There is an art of time, and there's an art of space. Okay, these two concepts. There, there are two kinds of arts that I categorize them in. You know, all these kinds of arts. The first is called the art of space. Look at this beautiful painting. Okay, from a very famous Pakistani artist, Abdur、uh, Chungtai. I hope I pronounced his name right from Lahore. Right, and look at this beautiful painting over here. What all it takes, right, to exist is some sort of space. For some people, if they understand painting well, they will look at it. You know, they'll, they'll look at it for like ten seconds. They'll think that they fully understand it, and then they can jump on. They don't have to worry about it, right? For some people, they love the picture so well, so much. And then they can stare at it for probably two hours, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. The time needed to appreciate this piece of art varies, right? All it takes to exist is space. So keep that in mind. There are other kinds of arts. For example, music or sun. It does not take any space to exist. It's In the form of music wave, acoustic wave, right? However, in order to appreciate fully, you have to reserve yourself the amount of time that is exactly as long as the duration of the art. For example, if this song lasts for ten minutes, you get to sit there for ten minutes. It doesn't take space; all it takes is time. Okay, I hope this makes a little. Little difference. This is the central thing we're going to talk about. The central difference between broadcast writing and print or newspaper writing. They're two different creatures. Okay, just like human and gorilla or chimpanzee. Their genes, according to scientific research, ninety-nine percent of the, the the genes are the same. But it doesn't matter. They're two different <laughs> creatures. Okay, so for newspaper writing is the art of space. Okay, so you, what you have to do later on, we're going to talk about, is that you put all the important things at the very beginning. Don't waste my time. That's why we learn a style called inverted pyramid style, right? Put it over there. Don't waste my time. If I don't understand it, is okay. I can read it slowly and fastly. It doesn't bother me, right? I can adjust my time to it. All you need to do is put in all the mo most important information at the very beginning. That's it. But for broadcast writing, you, as the creator, get to control the time. So you must be aware when you're doing the time, setting up the time, and make sure that everybody can get used to it. Because there's no way to rewind it back. Of course, right now we probably can do it, but people tend not to do it. Right? If it is gone, it is gone. So be aware that we are not writing for eyes anymore. We're writing for ears. And that is very, very different in terms of styles, and we're going to talk about it specifically in detail. So here, yeah, we're talking about we're writing for ears this time. That is the golden rule. Why is it important? Everybody will have this drive away moment. For example, I am cooking this tonight, right? Some of you guys will be cooking、um, biryani. When you're cooking biryani, it take like two to three hours. We all know, right? We don't eat it every day. Some people don't. I can't, right? When you're cooking, you're so bored, so you turn on the radio, right? You're listening to what's going on in Lahore, right? What's going on in UMT and other places, right? And then something draws your attention. Okay, I'm interested in it, and I keep listening to it. Oh, I'm cooking, right? So this is the company. Thing, so radio is important. It will accompany you when you're driving. You can listen to radio, right? But you can't write, <laughs> look at a newspaper, right? Read a newspaper while you're driving. So it's a good accompany. Okay, it's not、uh, replaceable. And radio, at the end of the day, is sorry. Radio is very powerful. Okay, it's very 
very powerful. According to research, sixty、uh, percent of the adults use it all the time in the car. And then right now, people use it, okay, in different ways. There's a thing called podcast, so it's still very relevant. A lot of people listen to it. Okay, now with these things bearing in mind that we are writing for ears, I am going to show you two examples. One of the example is a piece of writing from a newspaper. They're writing for eyes. The other example is a broadcast writing example. Okay, they're writing. They're specifically redesigned the same piece of story. They're redesigned to, to write for ears. I'm going to show you these two examples, right? And if you have time, would you please just type one and two, not now, like later on after I show it, and after I say please do it, go ahead and type one and two, and tell me which one of these do you think is broadcast writing? Okay, use your gut feelings, right? You don't have to learn anything specific. All I told you is writing for years, right? It should be you should be easy for you to understand the first time you hear it, right? And please tell me whether it's number one or number two that is broadcast writing. Okay, and why do you think like that? Okay,、um, Professor Ikbo, if you would just monitor it, you know,、uh, the chat box for me real quick, I would really appreciate it. Okay, after that, but let's go ahead and take a look. At those two examples, here's the first one. Okay, let me read it for you. A Pakistani jeweler said Wednesday his picture is among those of five foreign-born men the FBI says may have entered the United States on falsified passports. He said he has never visited the United States. An Associated Press photograph of Muhammad Ashgar taken at his shop in Lahore on Wednesday was near perfect match for the one included on the FBI list under the name Mustafa Khan Awasi, down to the permanent mole of Ashgar's left cheek. Blah blah blah. And there's a quote: "I'm a Pakistani and I'm living in my country." But American authorities have released my picture among those who are being traced by the FBI for entering America. Ashgar said, "I have no links with any terrorist organization." So the the gist of the story is pretty clear over here, right? Okay, here is the first story. Gist means the central idea. Sorry if I use some jargon. Okay, now let's jump to the second story. The same thing. Here's how it reads: Thirty-three-year-old Muhammad Ashgar, a jeweler from Lahore, and father of three, said he was surprised earlier this week when he opened up a local newspaper, only to find his picture plastered next to four other men who the FBI are looking for for questioning. Now, according to the FBI, these five men are believed to have entered the United States illegally around December the twenty-fourth. Ashgar says that it is his picture, but the name does not match, and he says he has never been to the United States, nor has he ever tried to travel to the United States. Ashgar says he has no ties to terrorism and does not recognize any of the other four men. And he says that he has no idea about how his picture got into the hands of FBI. Okay, now simply typing one or two in the chat box, and tell me which one do you think is writing for ears and for broadcasting? So this is the second story. It's just a simple question. You have to judge whether the the first one and the second one is yes. Correct. Mr. Jack, can you see the answers in the chat box? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah.、Um, well, heap said is example two. Okay. Good. A read. This is number one, and this is number two. Yeah. Just type any number you think. Okay. You can think of. You you think. I mean, you think. 
it is the good example. Which one? So here it is, the first one. Here is the second one. We'll give 30 more seconds. This is the second one. And this is the first one. Yeah, I totally understand it. It might be a little quick, okay? And I'll adjust my speed accordingly. But at the end, Mohib was exactly correct, okay? So the answer is the second story. The second story is writing for broadcast. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. So the first story, the exact same story is from Missourian, right? This is a local newspaper uh, based in Montana, the United States. It's a state, right? It's a new local newspaper. The second is a story from CNN. It's a transcript, a TV transcript from CNN. They're exactly the same story. I'm sorry, the story is from 2003. I really tried my best to look for a good example that happened in Lahore, um, Pakistan. I thought it would be a little related, but obviously CNN did not really care too much about Lahore since 2003. Shame on them, okay? They're very bad. But this is a good example, nonetheless, to showcase the difference between writing for ears and writing for eyes. Okay, let me take a little, you know, a little time to, to uh, discuss why, okay, they're differently. Just look at the lead, okay, as an example, the first paragraph. So this one is a newspaper one, right? Look at that. It's really packed. Everything's really tight, okay? The gist was revealed. The gist means the central idea of this news was revealed at the very beginning, very beginning, the first line of this lead. Look at it. A Pakistani jeweler said Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. Okay, from right now, his picture is among those blah, blah, blah. Okay, here is where the gist is revealed very quickly. Okay, the idea of the story was revealed very, very quickly. They're all over here. And then he said he's never visited the United States. And after that, this is what we call a bridge, right? This is the lead bridge and then a quote. So bridge pretty much subsidizes the lead. However, if you, you can we use this for broadcast, writing for broadcast news? I don't think so. Why? Think about it. Like I said again, right? A driveway, a driveway moment when you're cooking for Gogapa. Okay, for, for, for dinner. And then you hear something that you draw your attention, right? Okay, but everything just went out so quickly. And then before you pay attention to it, it's gone. Okay, you miss the point completely. And then jump to the quote. So, but, but well, hold on one second. Don't go. Okay, I, I still don't understand what's going on. I was actually cooking. So can you tell me what's going on? No, it's too late. Everything's gone. All the important things are gone in the first five seconds without you paying attention to it. That is bad, not good. So for broadcast writing, you see, when, let's take a look at when the gist is revealed. Okay. 33-year-old Muhammad Ashkar. First of all, we don't write this, right, in... Um, in, in print writing, there's too much detail. This is nuances. Well, I don't care about how old he is. Muhammad Ashkar, uh, he's not a famous person. So don't drop the code names. We're always told to not drop the code names. Just tell me a, a, a man from Lahore, Pakistan. It's okay, right? But this is the code name. We don't care about it. A juror from Lahore and father of three. Okay, I don't care about your father of three. I mean, for print, right? For Allah's sake, why would you telling me this? This is not important. Said he was surprised. Okay, surprised about what? Earlier this week. Okay, when he ended up a local newspaper. Okay, only to find his picture. Okay, here we go. Not until the third line. Okay, did this 
the broadcaster start to tell people what's going on. You see that instead of for print, it is reviewed immediately in the first line. Why they do it this way? This is not in the, the inverted pyramid style, but it's okay, right? When you turn on the the audio, people will say that okay, Muhammad Ashka, blah blah blah. Okay, you hear about the name, okay. For people from the United States, it's a name from the Middle East or from Pakistan or those countries. It's wonderful. Okay, something. Okay, going. It's going on in probably. Okay, and then from Lahore. Okay, something's going on in Pakistan. Okay, set of surprise. Okay, it drew my attention. Okay, I stopped cooking or while I'm cooking, I paid my attention to the audio or my. I tell my daughter. Okay, please turn up the volume. Let me hear what's going on. And this is the perfect time after five seconds, right, or ten seconds, that you reveal the gist, so people can slowly get to what you're talking about, and the point is not going to be missed. So this is different, okay. And there's one difference is that here is there's no direct quotes on the second one, whereas in print you always use a lot of direct quotes in our stories, and we never use that. In broadcast writing, oh, but we do use it, but it's in the form of sound bite. We'll talk about it later. So here is the central idea that you can tell that writing for ears is different from writing for eyes. And then the way this the the sentence is structured, right, is much easier to understand when you read it. It's much more fluent. There are hardly any. Commas over here in sentences are very fluent, whereas in the first one, right, and they have you know different uh, uh, commas here and there, uh, you know here and there, and then it's break it down in different segments. Okay, and it's the writing style is um, it's different, right? This is the past tense, and the other one is more in the in the in the、uh, present tense style. We'll talk about it later on. Okay, but central idea: this is writing for ears. Okay. Here, now we're going to talk about how to write in the broadcast style. I'll give you a few tips. I'm not trying to teach over here. Professor Egovol probably know way better than I do, but I'll just give you a little hint. Okay, they're different. First of all, please write conversationally. Okay, let's use words like today, tonight, tomorrow, yesterday. I know Professor Iqbal tell you to not use this probably in print writing, in real journalism. Like, not not real journalism. Sorry, they're all real journalism. I'm talking about in newspaper writing. The reason why? Because newspaper is the art of space. People may pick up a newspaper, you know, from three weeks ago. Right, and then they see something like you know,、uh, there's something happened today. So today, what do, what do you mean today? They're trying to go to the front page and see, you know, what day is it for today? You know, what what was the day of publication? And then they lost front page. They'll say, okay, well, I throw it away. You know, I'm saying they can't locate the time. But for broadcast writing, remember, is the art of time. So everybody will have the specific sense of time when they hear it. When you say somebody say today, you know it's today. You don't have to check your watch. Okay, you have a feeling it is today. Yesterday, you know, you know, I ate something different yesterday. I went to different places yesterday. Right. So we have a sense of time. Okay. So you can use words like today, tonight, tomorrow, yesterday. Avoid jargon. Jargon is big words. Don't use those. I'll give you some example. Avoid big fancy words. Use something that you speak, you say, and everybody would understand. Example, real quick. Look at this. The assailant fled on foot down University Drive Monday night, ev- evading the officers given chase. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold a second, assailant. I'm sorry. What does it mean there? It's too fancy. Okay,、It's、evading. Come on, evading. Wow, very literature. Giving chase. Okay, you even use this modifier at the end. Ah,、oh. so what really was going on there? So how about let's just change it to the robber ran down University Drive tonight. He ended up getting away from police. Ah, everybody will be able to understand it. Much more conversational, right? We use robber. Okay, we use ended up 
getting away these phrasal words or phrase, phrasal verbs, and then we break it down to two sentences, two short sentences, much easier to understand. Second, be short, be short. Okay, our sentences are short, simple, and to the point. Please let one sentence just tell one point. That would be better. For example, look at this. Council met tonight to talk about the vote. First thing, they couldn't decide on anything. Second thing, so they'll meet again tomorrow. Third thing, three sentences for three things, simple and straightforward. Okay, look at this stroke. Avoid commas in general. Yes. Why do we want to avoid comma? Look at this picture over here. When you speak, there's not really a difference between "let's eat, grandma," and "let's eat, grandma." When you talk, really, "let's eat, grandma." Okay. What do you mean? Do you want to eat grandma or you want to eat with grandma? You really can't tell the difference. Of a comma there, right? So it may cause some issues. So we want to make sure, if we can, avoid commas in general. And more often than not, comma is gonna make a lot of stops and pauses, and it's gonna make it harder for you to read. Remember, you're writing for ears. Somebody is going to read it out loud, and that's what we call a talent or a TV anchor. So you want make his or her job easier. Okay. For example, for in print, you may say, "The man who worked at San Marcos High School was pulled over on I-35." So this is just the name of a highway in the United States, a motor motorway. Okay. But you have comma comma. This is called parenthesis in grammar, right? You insert something in between with a set of commas. It is okay, but you know it's not really fluent. So how about this? Get rid of the commas. The San Marcos High School worker was pulled over on I-35. Ah, much more smoother. I don't have to stop and stop and. Okay, so avoid commas in general if we can. Ditch the IP. Ditch means abandon, get rid of, right? Not following. IP means the inverted pyramid style. Okay. Western people call it the Bible of right. We make them call it the the um um. Quran of、um, journalism writing, whatever you want to call it, right? So people use it that style <clears throat> very often in journalism writing. But in broadcast writing, is a little different. The situation is a little different. Like I said, we want viewers or listeners to stick around. So, the, so the inverted pyramid makes no sense for broadcast. <laughs> okay. So typically. The last line also will advance the story. So tell me what's going on next, okay? For example, council will vote on the issue tomorrow. So you can <clears throat> follow up tomorrow, okay? So you can follow up. <clears throat> Use present tense when you can, because people are watching or listening live. So write for them as if they're doing it right now. So instead of saying a murder was sentenced to death penalty Wednesday night for killing two young girls, say a a murder who killed two young girls is headed to death row right now. Something's happening right now because people have sense of time when they hear it, right? You don't have to worry about、it. like newspaper pig, people dig it out for like you know twenty <clears throat> years from now. But for broadcasting piece, it's gone. It's gone, right? Everything's fresh. It's fresher than a newspaper. However. Please don't be afraid of past tense, right? Just transition as you talk. Whenever you need to use it, right? You want to tell me, you know, this thing happened first. That thing happened second. That is okay to use some some past tense, just like how you talk. Not a problem. Yes, active voice. Please use active voice, just like how you talk. Use active voice often. Okay, so. 
instead of saying Mr. University was awarded a 500,000 grand, blah, 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 say the, the, the Ford Foundation has awarded a $500,000 grant to Miss City University. It's active voice, right? The flow's much better structure-wise. And most importantly, we spell this out. You, you realize there's a difference. We don't use the dollar sign and we don't have a lot of zeros. So people have to calculate one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero, five. Okay, five, of okay, five, five million. Oh, five, five, okay, sorry, 500,000. No, you spell it out right like this so people can read it very fluently, the anchor, without even learning it first, right? So use active voice, very important. Again, contractions. When you write it, you probably are not aware of it, right? I'm sorry, I really should not. I know. I should should probably not drink in front of you, <clears throat> but I have some uh, throat issues. Sorry, forgive me. I know Ramadan, but I'm in the United it's States. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No problem. That. Yeah. Sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, I don't want to uh, my throat to stop me from talking. But anyways, thank you so much for understanding. Okay, grammar is the difference between feeling your nuts and feeling your nuts. Okay, it's a bad joke. I'm so sorry. This is a bad, poor joke. But the idea is sometimes you really can't tell the difference between you are and your. So if that caused some sort of misunderstanding, you want to write it out. You are or write it differently. It's okay to use contractions. However, if you write like this, the judge says the man can't go back to work. Can or cannot? What? What'd you say? You aren't allowed to bring alcohol into the club. Okay, are or are not. Okay. In this situation, I suggest that you read your script out loud. If somebody will detect a difference where you think, okay, this is not really clear here. Please go ahead and change the way you write it. Okay. But in general, if it doesn't cause ambiguity, which is means hard, something hard to understand, you can definitely use contractions. Not a problem. Contractions means the apostrophe, right? You can't instead of cannot. Quotes are a little bit different. When writing for print, there's only one way to style a quote, right? So just the, you know, quotation marks, I won't, won't to the mall, Jackie said, and put the at the end of the quote. You want to... You want to show the most important thing always first, right? So front load your story. When writing the broadcast, you don't use quotes at all. We use sound bites. So whenever you see quotation marks, the anchor is not going to read. I went to the mall, Jackie said. You don't want to mimic the sound. It's pretty funny. You don't do that, right? So instead of doing that, you either paraphrase the information. Jackie said that. He wants to go to the mall. That's okay. Or you play the sound band of Jackie saying, mm -hmm. you play it. I went to the mall and you cut it. Yes, that's what Jackie said. That's okay as well. So make sure that do not use direct quotes in the part where the anchor needs to read out loud. I'll show you an example, right? Um, so here is another thing, right? So we don't say uh, put something said at the end of the sentence because when you speak, you just don't speak this way. You don't say that, okay, Jones confessed to murdering his wife, police said. You don't say this, right? You say when you tell people, tell your mother, tell your friend, gossip about what's going on. You always say, okay, police said that John confessed, blah, blah, blah. So write like such, okay? This is not for, <clears throat> for print. So you put it. At the very, who says what, at the very beginning instead of at the end. And then you always need a title when mentioning a person, of course. So we want to make sure that people know who is, you know, Jackie Liu. I mean, you always have a title when you have different names back and forth because people cannot jump into the beginning of the lead. It's gone. They can't jump to the beginning of the lead. And go ahead and figure out what's going on. So sometimes, you know, it's good to bring it up, you know, if there's so many names around, right? But put the title before in the name. Don't say that 
Arif Alvi, right? President of Pakistan. Instead of saying President Arif Alvi, right? Instead of saying Azar Iqbal, right? Professor of Communication, say Professor Azar Iqbal or Student Jackie Liu. Put that at the the title at the beginning, not after. Clarify the punctuation, a、uh, pronunciation. Sorry, this is important. You're writing for an anchor who's going to read your script, so really figure out every way you can to make his or her job easier. For example, if you want to use some names that are not easy to pronounce, please respell it out. Okay, don't use the phonetic symbol IPA. Don't use that. Right, it might take some time to. No, to um to to read right. So respell it, meaning use this style right. You spell out the pronunciation. It's called respell in linguistics. So how do you pronounce this word right? Oh, this is the fruit right. So oh okay, if you spell it out, Guadalupe for hard to pronounce words. So the anchor will see it. The anchor will just you know be able to spell it. Pronounce it the first time he or she look at it. Hyphenate the abbreviations. There's difference between abbreviation and acronym. Okay, abbreviation is this. Okay, is a short form of a long name, but you pronounce each letter individually. In this case, you have a little hyphen in between, so people know that is an abbreviation. U M T. Okay, so people won't try to pronounce it. Is a U M T or umt? Umt. I don't know. The anchor probably doesn't know, right? So you, if you, you know, you put it this way, people will know. Oh, okay, it's UMT definitely. USSR, USA, right? For, but for acronyms, which is another, you know, form of abbreviation where you pronounce the whole short form as one word, you don't say NASA, right? You say NASA. In this case, you do not use hyphen in between. Because for some words, the anchor may not know whether it's acronym or abbreviation. You have to write in this so the anchor will not make mistakes. Of course, you also need to spell out dollar sign percent db two eight four five five at ku dot edu. Okay, so everything you're doing is okay,、so、really doing is for is the effort. So that people can understand this better, okay? The anchor when they're reading it. Also, when in doubt, always spell it out. In fact, always spell it out. If you can spell out, spell it out, okay? As the you know point, okay? Sometimes it's being street, sometimes it means sent, right? Sent Mary's church. If you're talking about church, what is that? I mean, how should I spell it? Your anchor does not have time to think about it, so please spell it out. Dr is that drive right? Drive means some sort of road, right? Like、um, Blooney Drive, whatever it is. Or is that doctor? Dr mean, also means doctor, right? Doctor this, doctor that. I don't know. Spell it out, please. Eight. Be careful with the numbers. As a general rule, round off numbers and spell them out. Okay. Smith won the election with. Eight hundred ninety-four thousand three hundred ninety. Who cares? I don't care about that specific number. Three ninety-four, three ninety-five. Okay, I don't care. I know it's around nine thousand. You know, a hundred. I mean, oh, nine hundred, nine hundred thousand. That's it, right? I don't care about you specific. I mean, broadcasting is quick, right? So please just run it off and spell it out. Nearly nine hundred thousand votes. That's it. If you want to be specific, look at the newspaper. Don't bother me. I'm a broadcaster. I give you the gist of the story. Don't be too. Don't expect anything too specific. In broadcast style, of course, right? When you're working for a agency, every agency has its own rules that you need to follow. So here are different some different some rules that we I used to use. So for zero, you spell it out as zero. Okay. One two nine, you spell it out. O N E as one, T W O as two, so on and so forth. For ten to nine hundred nine ninety nine, use numerals. So just use numerals. 
more than nine ninety nine. It might be hard to you know pronounce it the first time, so please use a combination of numerals and words. For example, nine hundred thousand and four hundred eighty-five. Okay, so I don't have to count the numbers, right? I'll spell it. So spell out big numbers this way, so it's easier for pronunciation. Remember, at the end, the final rule. Is that you only get one shot? People were not going to be able to rewind it back. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime, so please cherish your time. Okay, and make everything easy to understand the first time. Okay, now let's just take a very quick look at different types. Okay. And there are different types, right? You, you might have this. Well, you might see this、uh, abbreviations or acronyms, whatever it is, right? In broadcast scripts, it's a little different, right? It's a technical script that is different from whatever you're gonna read from the newspaper. So here are some of the words, right? Different genres, different types of broadcast、uh, scripts, and here. Are what they means. For example, the first one RDR that is called reader. Reader means that, or sometimes it's called on cam. It means just a talking head. Okay, it's just a talking head of an anchor. Okay, you write like this. First of all, baseball. Baseball is what we call a slug. Slug is just one or two or three words. And tell me what's going. I mean, tell me what the story is about. It's like a label. So you have like ten stories, but you say baseball story. Give me the script of a baseball story, so people will know what it is. So this is just tell you which story. Tell everybody in the crew what story we're talking about. And then there's RDR means just reader. And then in this brackets, it's the shot description. It's anchor shot. So the cameraman will know that you know. Let's you know give the shot of the the camera camera、uh, of the anchor. And then everything else will be here right conversationally. We usually use Courier New, twelve found double space. Everything will be one paragraph. The reason why you don't break it down into short paragraph is that really the layout doesn't matter. If you feed everything into the teleprompter or something that you read、uh, an anchor reads from, right, it doesn't really matter that much, right? So you really can't tell the difference between paragraphs. So everything one paragraph is okay. So here is what it is, okay. I'm going to show you an example.、Um, as a matter of fact, let me reshare my screen. Share computer sound. Okay, hopefully you can. Can you still see this, the screen? I'm sharing. Can you still see the screen? I'm sharing. Yes, we can. Okay, so here is what it is, right? So、um, this is just a little example over here. I'll show it real quick.、Um, so this is the reader. She's supposed to read it all the way through. This little box over here is like a behind the scene thing. It'll help me to explain it later, right? In real world, you are not gonna see this, right? This is the behind the scene. It shows the camera angle of the anchor. When it's in red, it means that. You know, whatever is in this camera will be in air. Okay, this box is what you, as the audience, can see. When it is in green, it's just not on in air. But I sh share with you the, the relationship between audio and video in the script. For anchor, theoretically, right, this two will be the same because whatever she reads, you know, the anchor's、uh, shot will be projected to the real screen. Right, is that so? Let's take a look. KU baseball and softball just can't catch a break from the Kansas weather. Yet another home opener that wasn't supposed to be a home opener now won't be a home op opener. At least not today. The thunderstorms rolling through this afternoon mean the refs have called off today's game. The men's opener was originally supposed to be more than a month ago against Omaha. It was snow that canceled that one. Both teams will make up today's rainout this weekend with double headers. Weather permitting. Could you hear it well? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. As you can see, this is very simple and straightforward, right? So it's just a reading talking head. Second one, VO. VO means voiceover. 
means that for audio and video, it's a little different. Audio is the anchor talking, okay, simultaneously as you know, really in real time. But the video is something else, something you captured, you know, the the, the camera roll, which we call a B roll, like a presentation. Usually runs around forty seconds. Okay, here is what the script will look like. You have a slug over here, and tell you there's a VO anchor will come up first, and this reading head we all know that, and then you know the short description is VO means that it's voiceover, and then here is the description of the you know the video file. You know different people will use it, different places will use it differently, meaning that I'm gonna play a video, and then. Right, you still the anchor still have to read while the video is being played, okay. In this part, so basically the anchor will read, but the video will be something else, okay. So let's take a look of、uh, the example over here. The proposal to cut millions of dollars in funding from the special. This is the first part, still an anchor, a reader, right, and then it's gonna jump to a video. Olympics met more opposition, but this time it was from President Trump. Trump says he will override his own administration's proposal to keep funding. This override comes on the heels of major flashback from supporters of the Special Olympics and fellow Republicans who say they fully support the Special Olympics. Look at that, right? So this is behind the scene. You know, it's it's green, it's no longer red, but the voice still comes from this anchor. But the video, what you're gonna see is something different. This is called the VO, okay, which is different from a reader. It's no longer talking head, more visual parts. Third, salt. Salt means a sound bite. Like I said, for a real interview from a real person. Sometimes we combine VO and salt together. Just like when you're writing for print, you have a,、uh, you have a,、uh, uh, you have something called a,、uh, a lead, and then you have something called a,、uh, a bridge, and you have something called a quote, right? So Volsat is pretty much the same in in terms of the style. You have anchor saying something, and then veal and salt. Salt is just a sound bite. Okay, let's take a look. No longer from the anchor, though. It's something you pre-recorded. The bylaws are important to deciding how the board does its job. Also, how complaints move forward for those who file them. Committee members agree the new laws make things clearer. Be a little refined, a little bit better explanation. But you know, I think we agreed tonight. I think the additions that we that they put in were good. See the last part. She no longer talks, no longer in the screen, but everything will be from the soundbite, from interview. Well thought. <laughs> Last but not least, package. Everything's pre-recorded. I'm not gonna play. It usually runs two minutes to four minutes. The TD, the technical director, hits play button, and the anchor can eat donuts or halim or go cup, uh, go gapa or anything else or biryani. Okay, whatever. Okay, everything's pre-recorded. I'll show you a small, very simple example. If you've checked the AccuWeather app lately, you've seen the forecast for a busier than normal tornado season for tornado. So everything's pre-recorded. She's not doing anything, right? It's it's a package. Everything's packed up, right? So it's all the same until the very end. Nothing special. Okay. Uh. Valley. Actually, that's pretty much it. I'm sorry, hi. It took me a little longer than I expected. In conclusion, write conversationally. Please pay attention to the styles and look for more example and write more. Thank you very much, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much,、uh, Mr. Jackie, for having a good time with us. So, <clears throat> I hope you all people are enjoying with this、uh, conversation. Now,、uh, 
I just want to brief a little bit about the subject that we have been studying media writing skills. Uh, before talking to Mr. Jack about this lecture, I just briefed him that what we have been teaching before and what have we taught before that, uh, it was just the writing, different writing styles, the writing styles, uh, you know, print writing, electronic media writing styles, and then writing for public relations, and of course, advertising and the copywriting. And then we have another section to teach copywriting, just it was uh, media writing for broadcasting. So that was my main purpose to arrange all these. Uh, I would request you all to have your questions. You simply raise your hand if you have some questions about writing for broadcasting. Mohib, you have a question? Okay, please. Yes. So uh, thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, thanks for your time. These were quite wonderful tips that you gave us. And by the way, I like your aura behind you. Um, so the question is, um, you, you said that uh, in broadcast media, we have to use more direct language, more uh, direct uh, speaking style. Uh, but when we look at different TV channels or uh, broadcasting um, uh, organizations, uh, there is a huge difference between those. Like Fox News would be using probably still direct uh, style, but that's direct aggressive style. Uh, some people may argue that's a propaganda style. While BBC, it would uh, still maintain a dignity uh, they may still do the pro propaganda or they might still uh, put their point of view across. But there is always a difference between those two styles. So um, how do you determine which style is better? And is there any um, quantifiable way of uh, calculating which one is accurate and which one is not? Thank you so much, sir. Your question is excellent, is exceptional, and is very professional, right? Uh, here is my answer to it, right? As a practitioner, what you need to do is to adapt to the style of where you were working for. And that is very important. Again, I want to, I probably did not give a good disclaimer, but whatever I teach today is really just the overarching concept, Okay, whatever you learn in university or in schools, whatever you teach your students, right? I assume that you are probably a, a senior scholar, but really it's just for the elements. We're called element training. We're not really teaching them to go to the broadcast station to work tomorrow. You have to go through what we call an indoctrination process where all your colleagues and peers and seniors is going to teach you this is what we do and this is our style. But in case it takes you forever to adapt, you need to learn something in hand first. And that's why you go to university, go through the trainings. But like I said, it will give you the good foundation, but it will not tell you, it will not give you a smell, the sense of being BBC or VUA or sometimes Fox News or CNN, that takes some time to adjust to it. So you said exactly right. But when it pertains to whether it's something, you know, the, 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 the really the styles, it's, I don't think they should sound very emotional or um, subjective. They might have some difference in terms of their, 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 their English use. For BBC, it's more British English, right? Sometimes it's posh. They use different um, dialects and languages, right? Then uh, American English is different. But for real hard news, they really should not do it that way. I mean, I mean, uh, do it in a way that it sounds subjective. You might be talking about some opinionated uh, programs or dialect programs, but that is different from hard news. We're talking mainly, primarily about hard news, but really they should write conversationally. But how conversational? Is that BBC conversational or is that Fox News conversational? You have to ask your peers. The other way to do that is that you have to listen to where you want to work for. For a very long time, you learn about their style, you adapt yourself to their style. So when you're writing or taking their test, they regard you as their people. So like I said before, in the universities, when we teach students, when we're 
taking classes, you learn about the elements and basic ideas. But if you want to be somebody, we have really have want to have the characteristic. It's the process of indoctrination. I hope if I understand your question, sir. Sure, fair enough. Correctly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miss Mahind Hashmi is the next one who wants to ask some question. Mahind. Uh, hey, and thank you so much, uh, sir, for having a good lecture, with, uh, and it really helped us to improve our English, uh, especially English for our writing skill as a student. And uh, now, sir, my the question, my question is that how is how is it uh, possible to improve our English writing skill for the broadcasting purposes, uh, especially in an uh, in a non-active English country? Thank you so much uh, for your question, ma'am. This is a wonderful question. Um, the way to do that, and I do understand that um, you have two jobs at hand. You have to learn about the technical part of it. You also need to learn English at the same time. But trust me, all the Pakistanis I've seen and I've worked with speak or use perfect English. As a matter of fact, the exa two examples are I show you right. The CNN example and the newspaper example are all written by Pakistani journalists. They're exceptional. They have the world, you know, fame for writing good news. But uh, to your question, ma'am, what you need to do again is the process of information input. You need to read more and write more. Not only do you have to read and listen more, but you have to write, okay? And then change your style. Find somebody who's good in English or English teacher to correct your um, sentences accordingly. And then it's the old thing, right? You speak perfect English. So you probably know this better than I do. Is the process of use it. If you don't use it, you lose it. So that's the simple answer. Right, what we teach you is knowledge, but if yeah, it's knowledge, it's where is the capability? Right, it's really a matter of how much you use it. I hope that answers your question, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Jackie. Uh, we have another good question. Hopefully, it will be a good question from Umer Rubab. If I'm right, yes, sir. Umer Rubab. Please uh, question. I, yes. Audible? Yes, yes, sir, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. Do you have any particular methods of staying informed with some um, with accurate information? I mean, we can get facts and figures from certain organizations, but what about the other data? Is there any particular source or methods where we can get that? To get the correct information, the accurate information about uh, things in general, right? So, being, being, being a journalist or being a, a broadcaster, we are getting information from the different sources. So, yeah. is there any way to have the authenticity or to get the correct information? So, what kind of skills we have as a broadcaster, as a writer? Rabab, this is just a so sharp question. Uh, my American students probably would not ask these good questions. They actually, some of them, I, I, I doubt they care. <laughs> so good job, Pakistani students. I can't give you a correct answer. This is so big of a question. This answer, I mean, really, I don't think there's a, a simple answer either. It takes an entire course for our journalists Okay, when we're teaching, training our, our young journalists, it's called media literacy course to figure out as a journalist how you get the correct information. For the mass public, it's almost impossible for them to differentiate because they do not know how to evaluate the information. In the course I teach this semester and next semester is called information exploration. That's all we do. We'll teach you where to find credible sources and how to differentiate the sources that are credible from the not credible sources. Okay. And then, and how to use them. 
If you're interested in it, I can send you the uh, the, the link of the free textbook. Uh, it's free. Everything's online. Uh, um, I'll send it to you. Dr. Iqbal is the, the the one that we use called Be Credible. It's actually written by my colleagues, right? So in there, there, there are different ways, but I'm so sorry uh, that, that the book is written for a journalist and audience from the United States. So some of the points that databases are not applicable, but really the idea might be um, it's, it's good. Like I said before, it takes the whole course to answer your question. There's not really a simple answer. Otherwise, we're really not struggling every day for media literacy, for phony news, for fake news and all these kind of things. But a simple rule is to really approach and look for um, news right from credible, well-established credible sources. Right, like the Times, right, or the New York Times, and I'm talking about uh, Time Magazine or Washington Post and these kind of things, and BBC, and then I bet there are way more in Pakistan, right, because Pakistan has a lot of good uh, journalists. But for other things and databases, I, I don't have a good answer for that. It's it's really complicated. But I'll send you the textbook link if you're interested. In it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Mirubab, for keeping our good image in the eyes of a teacher who is teaching in the United States. And it's a very big compliment that the American students usually don't ask these kind of smart questions, but you do. So thank you uh, for a brief answer. Uh, Reej Hashmi is the next one who wants to ask a question. Reej. Uh, thank you for a wonderful lecture. Uh, it was quite helpful. So my question is how uh, writing for the media has evolved in the dig digital age uh, when you're writing particularly uh, where you're writing for uh, an online audience who respond uh, well with the visuals rather text. Oh, wow. Uh, Professor Iqbal, do you like this graduate student seminar or what? Internationally, uh, if you uh, categorize, they are undergraduate students. They're not graduate students. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although they are the students of master's level, but uh, the master's level of Pakistan is equivalent to the graduation in internationally, the 16 years of a graduation. So <laughs> okay. you may say that they are the undergraduate students. Okay, I really appreciate you know your your dignity, but your um, you know the, the, the pride that you can't hide <laughs> throughout your tone. But definitely, this is a great question. Um, again, that also takes then class to answer it in a nutshell, right? If I may just give you a little, you know, some small, uh, brief description on that is that you definitely write some things differently. And then really, uh, you know, um, if you have a picture, don't restate what the picture says, or you have infographic, don't restate that. Right. But write something aid to it right to help it help people better understand the material but uh if you have a video right write something that's not repetitive to the radio content of course and for really for um uh, new media things are short and you use hashtag and stuff but but really the central idea is that you have to adapt to know about your media for broadcasting for tv what is so special about tv TV has motion pictures and TV has sound and TV is quick. That is the feature of TV. What is print? Print lasts forever. Print has a longer space and describe things, right? And, and can put picture in it and that's print. So what is special about social media? Social media is even quicker. Social media is short. Social media is interactive. There's technology to it, right? So really technological part, the interactive part is something that you have to keep in consideration. Now, when we're doing data visualization, we use these things called interactive visualization. We use things, you know, they're, they're open source things called a Flourish Google, you know, in Google that you can make interactive or Tableau where you can make interactive infographics. And that is the thing we, we, we use to, to make, right? So people click in it when they hover their, their mouse 
on the infographics, they can get the the data from that point. And that's something we use for, like I said before, for social media, use something like hashtags, right? And you embed hyperlinks. And that's something that's different. You don't have to explain too much, but, and that also makes your, um, going, going back to Madame, um, uh, Rabab's question that also make you more credible if you see a source that's full of hyperlinks, right? Because everything has a clear source and you can back check it right at that moment. So that's one way, one cue to see whether a source is credible. But anyways, um, it'll take a course to answer, but the most important idea is that know your media and know the feature of your media and work around it. Thank you. Thank you. Do Thank we have so any much. other question? I think Sara or Javeria Malik, who wants to ask a question? Sir, Sarah. I want to ask the question. Yes. Sure, Sir, uh, does the does the nature of content have any impact on style of writing? Wow. These are hard questions. Very great question. The nature of content, does that have a... Uh, impact of style of writing. Um, I, I'm not, if I understand your question right, is that according to uh, for different contents, right? Do you write it differently? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Mainly, uh, it, it's really what your in real sense is what your boss is asking you to write. If your boss is asking you to write a quick news story to cover something, you turn everything into that. So the content doesn't really matter. Uh, at the very beginning, but if you have discretion as a journalist, you can pick what you write. And you see, if you see something that's very interesting, that's worth to investigate furthermore, you might turn that thing into a profile story. And that's something that you can do. You can follow up, right? So in that sense, the content really does have some understanding, some relationship with, um, with the genre. But more often than not, you get assignment from your boss. Your boss tell you to write a profile story about it. <laughs> and that's normally how it works. Or you cover a beat, okay, it, which means the, the special area of yours. But uh, yes, if you have a discretion, you can write about that. But normally, we get the genre directly noted from our boss, the editor. Thank you. Mr. Jackie Panel, you thank you very much for your time. So I would just want to conclude uh, with a single person who is uh, our colleague who is uh, working with us. So just, just to tell you and to increase your knowledge about not only we have a good students in Pakistan, but we have good professionals and academicians. Uh, we have Moza Ali Khan with us, so who is uh, a media professional, who is an academician, who is currently teaching, but he has been associated with different news organizations and working as a broadcaster. So, uh, Moza Ali Khan, uh, would you like to please uh, give a concluding and thanks note to our honorable guest? Thank you, Azhar. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear student, and very respectful uh mr Panlu, it was really really worth listening to you uh, i really appreciate your skills i really appreciate your presence over here what i really want to think about this that you know the technology uh we must all thank this technology which you know which overcoming the borders there are no borders now you know people are sitting in different part of the world and exchanging their knowledge exchanging their experience exchanging what they learn from their from their you know from their hard time even it was really amazing the way you describe the role of new media and how people can you know broadcast themselves uh, even the very minute technical details uh, it was learning experience for me and for my university fellows and for the students i, I was really impressed by the the questions, I mean, they, they just try to put you on your toes. Um, uh, uh, some of the questions were really, you know, they were opening new windows, especially the last one about the content and the uh, writing skill genre. And you really explained them well. Um, I'm really thankful uh, to Azarik Bal and to Sir Yu to, for your precious time, uh, for the students of, uh, of a country which very, you know, we, we, we have very limited... Uh, opening windows into the other parts of the world, especially to the skills, skillful people like you. 
I'm really thankful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Shukriya. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much all for your participation. Inshallah, we shall have some more uh, events like this. And uh, Mr. Pan Liu, we will not spare you and you will not be confined to this, just this single lecture with us. Uh, we shall invite you again and again. And I hope so you'll, in, you'll accept our invitation and we will have a good time and keeping uh, the advantages of this distance learning and online technology. So thank you very much all. Thank you for your attention. Hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you. My Goodbye. pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.